Hello everyone. Let's come to the third section. Discrete the least squares approximation. Okay, so this section where we are learn another method to obtain approximation. Uh, this is different from uh, the interpolation uh, approximation. Uh, this is a discrete least square. Okay, now uh, we are given a set of data points like this, also x i y i, and i from zero one to m. That means we are given m plus one points. Okay. Okay, the co two coordinates x i and y i for each point. But now we consider there there are some noises. Okay, so that means y i the function value y i is not exact value. Okay, so it's just uh, up, uh, some uh, uh, noisy values with some noisy. So we cannot uh, if we just use the interpolation method uh, to, uh, to approximate the function y equal to fx will bring the noises into the interpolations. So, we, we want to find another method. Okay? For example, if the noisy data, noisy data come from a Lillian function, y equal to a plus bx. Okay, so here I show you the figure like this. The data points are located around the straight line y equal to a plus bx. Here. This is the coordinates. Now you see we obtain some data points uh, like the black dots. Okay, now you see these dots and also here I show you uh, these dots can be bounded between the two straight lines actually actually here uh, we don't uh, or we cannot use interpolation method otherwise let's uh, see what happens if we use interpolate method that means we will find a uh, function passing through passing through all the points so we are like this uh like this it's okay for you can you understand the the difference so if we use interpol interpolate method we are like obtain the function like this because the interpolate interpolate means passing pass through the points. Of course, this is not good, right? Because all the nodes with noisy. So we cannot uh, uh, interpolate the noisy data. It's okay? So, here. Different uh, from the interpolate method. Actually, we can consider all the data points, all the data points around, around a straight line, like this. Okay, so the aim, the aim is to approximate the function. Okay, we use the least square method, least square method. Okay, now as you see, okay, we, we denote the right line, right straight line by y hat, y hat equal to a plus bx. Okay, of course, here is a different from the original original function right and also you can see the the for each each point data point maybe it cannot uh, uh lying on the line on the straight line so we have the arrow right we have the arrow so like this these are the arrow for example this point Okay, it is y i uh, x i and y i right. This is data point, and also if we uh, we want to obtain y i hat by a plus b x, so y i hat 
equal to a plus b x i. x i means the coordinate. Okay, the coordinate x i. So here we have the difference, the error. Okay, denoted by delta i. So delta i equal to y i hat minus y i. Okay, so it is a plus b x i minus y i. So you see, for each point, we are given the two coordinates x i and y i. We want to obtain a Lilian function a plus b i uh, b x denoted by y i y hat y hat. So we need to determine the two coefficients a and b. Okay. So here y hat y hat means means the point lying on the the straight line, y i y hat, okay, by the coordinate x i to obtain the function value. So it is a plus b x i, and we have an arrow for each point. Of course, this point just lie on the straight line. The arrow is zero. Otherwise, you see all other points we have arrow. Okay. The least square method means. We want to find a balance straight line. It's okay. We find a balance such that the all the arrows, okay. Of course, because some points uh lie up uh the straight line, some points uh below the uh straight line. So we need to consider the uh delta square, delta i square. And then compute the summation of all the nodes, uh, the arrows. Then we let it uh, be minimal. So that means the least square method is okay. Then we uh, compute the the summation for each point, right? All the points i from zero to m delta i square. Okay. So that means delta i square equal to a plus b x i minus y i square, and compute the summation i from zero to m, and find its minimal point. Is okay. So this is the least square method. It is different from from the interpolation method. So you should understand firstly the difference between the interpolation method and the Least square method. I repeat it. Okay, for interpolation method, that means we we find a like this. We find a function value function pass passing through all the points. This means interpolation, right? Interpolation. But now we find. The data points with no with noisy, so we cannot passing through. We cannot pass through the noisy data. It is it is not necessary, right? And it is not good to pass through the noisy data. So we just find a good good approximation such that all the all the arrows. Is the minimal? Okay. So how to evaluate the error? We used we use the square, delta i square, and also the uh, another difference between between the interpolation method and the least square method. Okay. So you should know. Uh, I if we use the interpolation method, we need to find a, a polynomial, right? Okay, it is a zero plus a one x plus two a n x n right? The degree of n. So you see, uh, in interpolation method, the number the number of coefficients is the number of data points. It's okay. So we are given three. For example, we are given three data points. We find a parallel. Bolic curve, right? The degree 
is the same as the number of points minus one. Now, for least square method, the degree of the function is independent of the number of data points. Now you see, we don't care how many the number of the data points, right? M is independent of the degree. Now you see, here we just use linear function, degree 1, whatever the number of data points. It's okay for you? So, again, we have two uh, differences between the interpolation method and the least square method. Firstly, for interpolation method, the curve passes through all the data points. But now, we don't pass through all the data points because now the data points are noisy data. So we cannot pa uh, interpolate the noisy data. Okay, first, first difference. The second difference, the degree of the polynomial. For interpolation method, the degree of the polynomial equal to the number of data points minus one. Remember? But now, the degree of the function is independent of the number of nodes for the least square method. It's okay for you? So, the, because the data points are different, for, so, uh, usually, if the data points are exact without noisy, then we can use interpolate method. If the data points are huge and with noisy, then we use least square method. We don't use interpolation method. It's okay for you? Okay, continue. Let's continue. How to determine? Now, the aim here for this example, because we guess we guess all the data points around around the straight line. So we only need to determine the two coefficients a and b. It's okay? So let's continue to determine the two coefficients. Now, again, we write here, given the data points x i, y i, i from 0, 1 to m. Now, we just need to find a linear function, y hat equal to a plus b x. That means we only need to determine the two coefficients a and b, such that you should know the difference. Okay? We consider the minimum of the summation i from 0 to m, the square y hat xi minus yi square. It's okay? Then the function y hat, if we can find, we can find the this function, linear function, satisfy this minimized condition, then we say the function y hat is the least square solution or least square approximation to the discrete data points x, i, y, i, i from 0 to m. It's okay for you? You firstly need to understand the mathematical um, question problem for the least square method, okay? Now, we need to determine the function with the two y rows, okay, a and b. Here, a and b are two function, uh, are two co uh, coefficients of the linear function, but uh, we need to transform the problem to determine a function with the two y rows, a and b, like this. Now you see, we rewrite the summation of the squares. Y hat, what is y hat? Y hat here, y, y hat xi equal to a plus bxi. It's okay? Replace x by xi and minus yi. Then this is the arrow for the point xi and yi. It's okay? So here, by the figure, we just write here, this is data i, right? y i hat minus y i. So y hat equal to a plus b x i. 
So the di the delta i is the difference. Okay. Now here. Okay. Now we are given x i and y i. So for this formula, a and b are two unknowns, right? Now then we can consider this is a function denoted by e with two variables a and b. Is okay for you? So here you firstly need to understand the aim is to determine a and b. Here a and b are the two coefficients of the Lillian function y hat. Now we write the aim, the target, the target summation here by this form. Because x i and y i are given, are given, we know x i and y i. So we can consider the right side this term as a function, new function denoted by E with two variables A and B. It's okay for you? So we can continue. Actually, I can write here for you. I from 0 to M square, okay? Square, so firstly, it should be a square plus b square xi square. And plus yi square. It's okay for you? Three terms, three terms square. And plus 2abxi. 2abxi, right? Two terms. And uh, minus 2ayi minus 2bxi yi. It's okay? We obtain six terms for the square. It's okay? Because we have three terms here. So by square. We have six terms. Okay, now you see, x i and y are given. So we only we only determine to determine a and b. So we consider this is a new function with two variables a and b. It's okay. Then we need to find the function y hat. This problem is equivalent to find the minimum point a star and b star of the new function capital E A B. It's okay? Then we only need to solve uh, the minimum point. Okay, now we come to another problem. We are given now we are given a uh, bivariate bivariate function E A B. How to find its minimum point? By calculus, we need to find the zero point of the gradient. Remember, this is a basic knowledge in calculus. Okay, so we need to compute the partial the gradient. So the two partial derivatives, right? Firstly, partial e partial a equal to zero, and second, partial e partial b equal to zero. It's okay? So we need to find the, the two equations. Two equations. It's okay? Now here I show you the result. Here, E A B I write here, okay? E A B equal to the summation I from zero to M. And Y A hat minus Y I. So a plus b x i minus y i square. It's okay. Okay. Now let's consider the partial e partial a. Okay. So I write here firstly partial e partial a because here is summation, right? So again summation i from zero to m. Okay. Square. Square term, 
partial derivative on a. So firstly, it should be two times a plus b x i minus y i. Then multiply the partial derivative on a. It's okay for you. So the result should be one. It's okay. So here, this is partial e partial a. Two times a plus b x i minus y i multiply one. One means the partial derivative of the this term. This term. It's okay. This is partial e partial a. And what is partial e partial b? Similarly, summation i from zero to m, right? And two times two times a plus b x i minus y i multiply multiply the partial derivative on b. Here, b is a variable, so x i are no a constant. So the partial derivative should be x i. It's okay for you. You should know here a and b are two variables. X i and y are given given constants. So this is partial partial e partial b. So two times, okay, a plus b x i minus y i multiply x i equal to zero, equal to zero. Okay, we need to determine the two unknowns a and b. Now we are we have we obtain the two equations, so we can solve it, right? Okay, so we can because here twice two times we can move and actually we can directly delete two because here equal to zero to so two times. Okay, two times can uh, equal to zero, so we can deter uh de delete two. Right? It's okay. So then we obtain. Okay, this is a plus b x i minus y i equal to zero. And this term, a plus b i, okay, we multiply x i inside. So firstly here, multiply x i minus x i multiply y i. So here, right, equal to zero. You should know a and b are unknowns. Not, not x i and y i. Where x i and y i are given points, okay? Then we can solve it, okay? Or we can write it in the, uh, Lillian system like this. Now you see, for the first equation, the two unknowns are A and B. So for A, for A, we can separate into three terms. Sigma i from zero to m, A plus sigma i from zero to m, B x i minus sigma i from zero to m equal to zero. It's okay? Three terms. Three summations. Okay, now summation A. A is constant. Okay, uh, A is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, different, uh, is independent of I. So that means sigma one. It's okay. I from zero to M. Actually, this should be M plus one multiply A. This term, right? And this term, because summation B, B is fixed, so we can draw, draw out, put here. So the summation of x i i from zero to m clear, and we move this term to the right side. We we'll obtain summation y i i from zero to m. It's okay for you. So now we rewrite this equation into this equation. We know two. On those A and B. It's okay? Continue. For this equation, also three terms. I from zero to M. A multiply Y X I. It's okay? And the second term plus 
summation i from 0 to m be xi multiplied xi, so it is xi square, and uh, minus the summation i from 0 to m. Okay, so xi multiplied yi, xi multiplied yi equal to 0. It's okay. And again, the summation here, we can move a outside the summation. So first term should be summation of xi i from 0 to m multiply bracket multiply a. It's okay. We move a outside the summation. And uh, we, as for second term, we move b outside the summation. So summation i xi square i from 0 to m is okay. Multiply b, multiply b. And also we move this term to the right side, so it is summation i from 0 to m, xi, multiply yi. It's working for you? Okay, of course we can write it into the matrix form. The two unknowns are a and b. So, 2 by 2 matrix. It's okay? The first element is summation i from 0 to m of 1. Actually, it is just uh, equal to m plus 1, right? And the second element is summation. Summation i from 0 to m, xi, multiply b, right? Equal to right side, first element is summation yi. Clear? And this equation, first term here, sigma i from 0 to m, x i, and you should know. Now you see, these two elements are same, right? It's okay. They are same as summation of x i. And uh, this term here, the coefficient, sigma i from 0 to m, x i square. It's okay, and uh, okay. This row multiply a and b colon equal to this element. So summation i from zero to m x i multiply y i. It's okay. That means we are we obtain this two by two linear system. Okay, so it is easy to solve it. Then we can obtain a and b. Then we obtain y hat. Then to solve this, to solve this linear system, then we obtain y hat x equal to a plus b x. It's okay for you? Then we obtain the approximation. This is the least square method. So here, in the matrix form, the two, the Two, uh, four elements. First one is summation of, uh, one. I from zero to m. So it is just m plus one. And this is summation of xi. They are same. xi summation. xi square summation. Right? Multiply a and b. Then equal to summation of yi. This is summation of xi multiply yi. Then we can solve it. Okay. Also we call this linear system by the normal equations. It's okay. Normal equations means by least square method, uh, we just need to solve the normal equations, then we can obtain the conversions A and B. And then we can obtain the least square solution. Okay. For here, we can solve it because actually uh, you don't need to uh, remember this, this uh, big uh, of uh, equation or formula. Actually, it is just to solve the linear system of here because we know uh, it is a ratio, right? The denominator is the determinant of this matrix. Now you see the two by two matrix is determinant is m plus one this element multiply this element. So here m plus one multiply this element x i square summation, right? minus the product between the two elements. So it is sigma xi square 
the bracket square. It's okay. This is a determinant of this matrix, coefficient matrix, right? And uh, the numerator, numerator means we replace the first column by the right column. Remember? You should remember uh, this A equal to the determinant of A1 over the determinant of A, right? This is matrix A. What is A1? A1 means we replace the first column by right side. Okay, so that means we use this element, multiply this element. So here, you see, summation of xi square multiply summation of yi minus the product between the two elements. So xi summation multiply this element, summation xi yi. Okay, and b equal to the ratio. The numerator is determinant of a2. What is A2? A2 is replace the second column by the right column, right term. It's okay. And also divided by the determinant of A. So for B, you see, now we consider the uh, uh, denominator firstly, it is same, right? It's okay. Determinant of A. So numerator, that means we replace this second column by this column. So the determinant is this element multiply this element. So n plus 1, n plus 1 multiply this term. So the summation of xi, yi minus the product between the two terms, this term and this element, right? So summation of xi multiply summation of yi. Actually, you don't need to remember this, this uh, uh, formula. Actually, uh, in example, these are numbers, so you only need to solve the Dillian system. That's okay. Let's show you the example firstly to help you to understand. Okay, now let's come to the example. For the following data, we need to find the least square approximation. Why? equal to a plus bx. Actually, here should be uh, y hat. It's better to use the same symbol. Okay, y hat. Now, we are given this data points. xi equal to 0, yi equal to minus 2.1, and 1 and minus 0 0.9, 2 and minus 0 0.1, 3, 1.1, and 4, 1.9. Actually, I show you the figure. Now you see, we are given the discrete data points. 0, minus 2.1. So here, this point, you, you can see. X is 0, y, yi is minus 2.1 and uh, next point 1 and uh, minus 0 0.9 so 1 is here right okay here minus 0 0.9 and the next 2 and uh, minus 0 0.1 2 here minus 0 0.1 here and the next 3 and 1.1 .1, so this is should be 3 the uh, 1.1 .1. okay this point continue 4 and uh, 1.9, 4 and 1.9, okay, close to 2, like this. Now we are given 5, 5 data points, 5 data points, because now you see, this data points with noisy, right? So that means we need to find a straight line, uh, we need to find this straight line, not, but you should know, this straight line don't pass through all the points exactly. The aim is to let the summation of the arrows minimized. Minimized the arrow. It's okay? So, we need to find the straight line, 
like this, not not pass through not, uh, the data points. This is the difference between interpolation method and the least square method. That's okay for you? Okay, so the aim is to find this straight line because this is a linear function. So we can write the aim function y hat by a plus bx. So we only need to determine a and b, two unknowns, two coefficients. But now we have five data points. So the second difference between interpolation method and the least square method, the degree just one linear function, but we have five data points. So the degree is different of the number of data points. It's okay for you? Okay, so how to determine A and B? Let's come back. Here, we need to use the normal equation. It's okay? So now, what is a normal function? Okay, again, we come back here. This is a normal function. Just a 2 by 2 matrix. The first element is m plus 1. m is, uh, m plus 1 is the number of data points, right? And uh, this term is summation of xi, summation of xi, summation of xi square. It's okay for you? So, come back to the example. Then here, we have 5 data points. So, first element is 5. It's okay? And here, I, I write the index i from 1 to 5. You should understand this is equivalent to the, the, the index from 0 to m. This is, is equivalent, right? Because we only need to consider the summation of all x i. So, I write here. So, you should understand the difference here. Difference. This means the summation of all xi, summation of all xi, summation of all xi square. It's okay? We can write here i from 0 to m. Of course, here, we can write here because 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have 5 data points. So, of course, we can write it by i from 1 to 5. It's okay? Then summation of xi, summation of xi. Summation of xi square. It's okay. The two by two matrix. Matrix. Then here, right term. The summation of yi. It's okay. Summation of all yi. Here we use index from zero to m. But here, of course, we can use the index from, from one to five. That's okay. That's equivalent. Right? And the second term, Summation of xi multiply yi, all the data points. xi multiply yi, summation. Here, we use i from 1 to 5. It's okay? It's okay for you? Okay, let's compute the numbers. This number, just the 5, number of data points. Of course, it is 5, right? Okay, here, the summation of all xi, here, xi, so it is 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. It's okay? So here should be 10. It's okay? 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. Of course it is 10. It's okay? And now this element equal to this element. So this is just a 10. Okay? Now this element is a summation of xi square. So, 0 square, 1 square, 2 square, 3 square, 4 square, the summation, 30, right? 0 square is 0, 1 square, 1. So, 0 plus 1 plus 2 square, 4, plus 3 square, 9, plus 4 square, 16. It's okay? So, 1 plus 9, 10. Okay, 16 multi, uh, plus 4, 
20, 20 multiplied 10, 30. It's okay. We obtain C. It is very easy, right? Just compute the summation of xi square. Okay, we obtain the 2 by 2 matrix. Now, two, ter two, two elements of right, right side. Okay, the first element is summation of yi. So, here, minus 2.1 minus 0 0.9 minus 0 0.1 plus 1.1 plus 1.9 it's okay so it is easily to check the summation of all yi just be minus 0 0.1 it's okay you can check it okay and uh, next is uh, summation of xi multiplied yi okay so here 0 multiply minus 2.1 0 right plus 1 multiply minus 0 0.9 so that means minus 0 0.9 okay plus 2 multiply minus 0 0.1 so minus 0 0.2 it's okay 2 multiply 0 0.1 and plus 3 multiply 1.1 so it should be 3.3. .3. It's okay. And plus 4 multiply 1.9. It's okay. Okay, you can check the summation. The summation is just 9.8. So the summation is 9.8. Clear? Then we obtain the linear system, just a 2 by 2 matrix. So it is very easy to solve. Okay, to solve the normal equations, just the 2 by 2 linear system. Okay, now let's show you the result. A, okay, it is a ratio, right? The de de determinant, the denominator is the determinant of the matrix. So 5 multiply 30 minus 10 multiply 10, so 10 square. It's okay, this is the denominator, the determinant of matrix A. Okay, what is the numerator? Replace the first column by the right column. So, A1, I write here. A1 is minus 0 0.1, 9.8, 10, and 30. This is A1, right? Okay, so the determinant, now you see, 30 multiply minus 0 0.1, minus 9.8 multiply 10 or 10 multiply 9.8 it's okay we obtain the numerator it is easy to check the ratio just be minus 2.02 it's okay numbers you can check now let's come to b for b also it is a ratio right okay what is the numerator what is a2 Right? A2 is uh, replace the second corner by the right corner. So it is my 5, 10, minus 0 0.1 and 9.8. It's okay? So determinant. 5 multiply 9.8 minus 10 multiply minus 0 0.1. It's okay? Like this. The deno uh, de denominator is same to A, right? So, you can check the ratio just be 1. Okay, we solve the normal equations to obtain A and B. Then we can see we obtain the least square solution or the least square approximation by y hat. Y hat, we use y hat here. Equal to A is minus 1, uh, 2.01, 2 plus B multiplied x. Now we write B is 1. 1 multiplied x plus A, so minus 2.02. It's okay for you? Now you see, we obtain the least square solution, the linear function. It's okay? So here, now I show you the figure again. These are the data points, right? At last, we can obtain this straight line. 
y equal to y hat. Uh, we use y hat, okay? y hat equal to x minus 2.02. Okay? So, uh, when your formula with this method, usually we just use y to represent the function. So, that is y here. I use, I use, usually, uh, we don't write uh, y hat again. Okay? But after, if you, you, you are not familiar with this computation, firstly, of course, you can use y hat. Okay? Like the, uh, formulas. It's okay for you? We obtain the least square solution. Okay. This is a simple case. That means we only need to determine a Lillian function. Of course, if we, we need to find a general, general case. For example, if we are given the data points like this, now you see, we are given data point like this. Of course, it is not good just to use a straight line. If we use this straight line, not good because the errors are big, right? It's okay. So for this data points, we know it is not good to just use Lillian function. But if we can consider use a parabolic curve or the quadratic polynomial, okay, we can obtain better approximation. It's okay. So then for this case, we can consider y hat by quadratic polynomial. So a plus bx plus cx square. It's okay. In this case, we need to determine the three coefficients a, b, c. It's okay. Whatever, how many that happens, the degree is fixed by two. Because we guess, we guess the data points around, around the parabolic curve, like this. It's okay? Of course, if we consider another, uh, another, uh, example, if, if the, the data points like this. Now you see? If the data points like this, okay, now you see in this case, parabolic curve is not enough. You cannot use a parabolic curve. If you use like a parabolic curve like this, now you see this part, the data points with big arrow. It's okay? Okay, in this case, now it's better to use like this, the curve like this, around this curve. Now in this case, we can use cubic, cubic polynomial. So, a plus bx plus cx square plus dx cubic. Now we need to determine the four coefficients. Okay? The degree is just three. It's independent of the number of the data points. It's okay? So again, the two differences between the interpolation method and the least square method. Firstly, we don't interpolate the data, nor the noisy data points because the data points with noisy, right? We don't use interpolation. Second, the degree of the target function is independent of the number of data points. It's only deter, determined by, uh, what, what type of function you, you need to, uh, to consider, right? In order to obtain better approximation. In this case, we can use a quadratic polynomial. In this case, we can use a cubic, uh, polynomial, right? Of course, uh, for the, for the applications, in applications, you can try you can try firstly use use low degree no degree uh, polynomial and uh, if the error is big the accuracy is not good then you can change the degree of the polynomial 
or you can change the type of function. It's okay. So now here I show you the general case. That means if we, uh, if the polynomial, simple polynomial is not enough, uh, we can choose a general function. Now we are also given a set of data points x, i, y, i, f from 0 to m and plus 1 data points. Now we choose a function space, capital S means, okay, it is spanned by the basic functions, phi 0 x, phi 1 x to phi n x. Now you should know m is different of n, okay, n is the, not the number of that, uh, the basic functions, m is the number of data points, they are different, right? Then the aim is to find a function s star x by the Lillian combination of the basic functions. a k star multiply phi k x belongs to the space. Here, you see, for this case, that means phi 0 x equal to 1, phi 1 x equal to x, phi 2 x equal to x square to obtain quadratic polynomial. For cubic polynomial means phi 0 equal to 1, phi 1 equal to x, phi 2 equal to x square, and phi 3 equal to x cubic. It's okay for you? Now that means we choose different function space with different basic functions. We only need to determine the coefficients. Right? Here we determine A, B, C, D. Here we use A, K star to represent the coefficients. Okay. Satisfying. Now you see. Minimize. Minimize the square of the arrows. So, S star. S star means the function, right? X, I. S star X, I minus Y, I. Okay. Then this is the error for each, each data point. Then we consider the square and the summation. Okay. So minimize, minimize all the, uh, uh, space in the space. Okay. Continue. Then we can see the, the function S star satisfy the minimal then we can call it also the least square solution or least least square approximation. Is okay for you? So here we just consider use to to use the general uh, basic functions or general function space. Now you see different functions. Okay, actually uh, the same, the idea is the same. Now. It is equivalent to find the minimum point of a0 star, a1 star to an star, because now we need to determine n plus 1 coefficients. Okay? So, we did uh, also denoted by the capital E, a0, a1 to an, n plus 1 y bros, right? By the summation of the squares, sxi minus yi. It's okay? And sx, is a k multiply phi k. This is also phi k. Okay, phi k x phi k x phi k x i minus y i summation. Okay. Uh, here actually you can you can write by a zero phi zero x i plus a one phi one x i plus plus two a k phi k x i right this is s this is s x i and the minus y i minus y i square square and then summation i from 0 to m m is the number of data points okay here we use another summation k from 0 to n to represent this summation Okay. Okay. Now that means we 
uh, consider the function capital E of the n plus 1 vibros, vibros. So, in order to obtain the minimum point, also the gradient should be 0, right? So, gradient means the all the partial derivatives, partial E, partial AJ, J from 0, 1 to N. All the partial derivatives are 0, right? It's okay for you, the gradient, the gradient. Okay, so again, it is equal to not now let's consider the, for example, I show you partial E, partial A0. Partial E, partial A0. Now, now you see, again, it is summation I from 0 to M. You see the bracket square. So the partial derivative should be firstly two times of the bracket. It's okay. So remove. This bracket here. Okay? So this is uh, right here. The summation of k from 0 to n. Okay? ak, 5k, xi minus yi. This term. Then multiply, multiply the departure derivative on a0. Okay? a0 is unknown or uh, vibro. So the coefficient is phi 0 xi. So that means we multiply phi 0 xi here. It's okay? Because here is a0, here is phi 0. So for general case, if it is here is a partial aj, partial aj, so here is phi j. Here is phi j. It's okay? Here is 0, here is 0. It's okay? Okay. So again, we can obtain multiply phi j inside the summation. Now you see, summation k from 0 to m. And uh, here, we write here inside phi j. We multiply phi j inside this term, also inside y, yi. And uh, here, minus, minus, we move to the right side. So here, summation i from uh, 0 to m, yi multiply phi j xi. It's okay? The right side. And also here, 2 times, because this equation equal to 0, the common term factor 2 can be deleted. It's okay? And also here, we have double summation. Double summation, we can change the order. Now we move summation of k from 0 to, to n outside. And inside the summation i from 0 to m, you see i from 0 to m, and here 5kxi multiply 5gxi. So here 5kxi multiply 5gxi. And uh, summation, okay, summation of i, okay, multiply ak, multiply ak. Because the index for a is k, so ak can be outside this summation of i. It's okay for you, but inside the summation of k. It's okay? Then we obtain this Lillian system. Okay, so this is also the normal equations. And if, if we use, if we use the notation in the product, in the product of vectors, if you remember, Okay, uh, I, I remind you the inner product x1, x2 to xn and another vector y1, y2 to yn. We have the two vectors. Okay, what is the inner product? The inner product is a summation i from here, from 1 to, to n, okay? And uh, if we use the same, okay, from here, 0, 1, okay, I use the same index from 0, 1 to m, I use m here, okay? So here should be ym, then the summation from 0 to m, okay, the multiplication between two pairs, 
right? Let's look here. X, I, Y, I. It's okay for you? So this summation is the inner product between the two vectors. Clear? Now you see, this is also multiplications. Okay, so if we denote 5k here, I, I need right here. Uh, okay, I write here. 5k. We denote this vector by, by 5kx0, 5k, 5kx1 to 5kxm. This is a vector. Another vector for 5j. We denote it by 5j, then 5j x0, 5j x1 to 5j xm. It's okay? We denote the two vectors, the, the dimension, we have m plus 1. Uh, elements for each vector. Then the inner product between the two vectors here, like this, is a summation. Summation i from 0 to m, i from 0 to m, to pair, pairs, right? Pairs. So 5kxi multiply 5gxi. It's okay? Just like xi multiply yi. So that means this term just be the inner product, 5k and 5j. Clear? Then we can write, we can write also the inner product between vector f and vector 5j. What is vector f? Vector f is just y0, y1 to ym. It's okay. So now you see this summation is the inner product between f vector and 5j. Now you see, 5j x0 multiply y0 plus 5j x1 multiply y1 plus 2 5j xm multiply ym. This is summation. You see? So we can use the inner product between f and 5j. Clear? Then we can rewrite we write these normal equations into the matrix form. So here, we firstly we can write the normal equations by using the inner product. Now you see the bracket means the inner product between 5k and 5j. And this inner product between f and 5j. Okay, so in the matrix form, we can obtain like this. Now, the unknowns are A0, A1 to AN. Okay? The first row, the first row is in the product between 5050, 5051 to 505N. And the second row is 51 in the product between 5150, 5151 to 515N. And the last row is phi n uh, in the product between phi n phi zero, phi n phi one to phi n phi n. Actually, you can see this is a symmetry, symmetry matrix. Now you see these two terms, phi zero, phi one in the product, phi one, phi zero. So they are same number, right? It's okay. And also, you see the diagonal elements, phi 0, phi 0, phi 1, phi 1, phi n, phi n. It's okay. So this is also normal, normal functions. Okay. And also right term, f phi 0, because j from 0 to n. So f phi 0, f phi 1 to f phi n. Now we obtain n by n, n by n matrix, n by n matrix to solve n on n, oh, n plus 1, it should be n plus 1, because uh, n plus 1 by n plus 1. The dimension is okay. Now we know the coefficient matrix is non-singular, is equivalent to the 
functions phi 0, phi 1 to phi n, they are linear independent. This phi is this phi, okay? We use, uh, means the same function. Okay. So we can obtain actually, so be, to solve this linear system to obtain a star, a0 star, a1 star, a n star, then we denote by s star. Okay, so it means the s star is the least square, least square, like this. If we use the norm, the norm means the distance between s star and f is the minimize, minimize. Okay, so we also call this is an error, square error between s star and f. We consider the minimized error. It's okay. Of course, this is some general case. For general case, I only ask you to understand, understand it because, uh, for example, we show you here, you see, we show you the example. Now we use the quadratic polynomial to determine three coefficients by the three basic functions. And uh, here we use cubic polynomial to determine four coefficients by these four uh, basic functions. These are simple, right? And also similar to the example, just uh, for your example, we just use the linear system. So we only consider the two uh, vibros, two coefficients, because now we consider this sample, uh, sample data points around, around a straight line. So we can just use a straight line to obtain good uh, approximation. Okay. So firstly, you need to master this example to, to practice by yourself. It's better for you also to understand the general case because in your research, in your research, maybe it is not enough to just use a simple polynomial. Maybe you need to use some uh, complex, complex, complicated functions. Then I show you this general, general theory. Okay. You can choose different basic functions to construct the uh, least square solution. Okay. So this is a general method to use general, uh, approximation function space expanded by the basic functions. Because we choose basic functions, so they are linear independent, then you can obtain this normal function, normal equations by the non-singular matrix. So you can obtain the unique solutions for A0, A1 to AN. It's okay for you? So this is a general, general case. But the idea is the same, right? The idea is to minimize, minimize the, the error by square. You, you should understand why we use, why we, we use square. Because the error may be negative, uh, may be positive, may be negative. It's okay? So I show you if we, we don't use square. For example, like this. We are given the two point, the two point here. Okay. And here. We are given the two point. If we just use this straight line, now you see, this arrow is positive. This arrow is negative. Then the summation of the uh, two arrows are zero. It's okay. For example, this arrow is positive one. This arrow is negative one. Then the summation of the two arrows are zero. But uh, of course, this straight line is not good enough, right? Because you can, you can choose this straight line. Okay. More, more, more better than this straight line. But if you don't use square, 
if you don't use square. This uh, straight line also with zero summation uh, of no, of errors. It's okay. So if you use square, if you use square, then the square of positive one is one, and the square of my negative one is also one. Then you see the summation of one and one are two. Is two the error? Now this case by square error is two. Two is big. So that is why here we need to use square. Okay?